Hi everybody, I am That Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about angiotensin II receptor blockers, also known as ARBs. So let's get into it. First of all, what do they do? They do exactly what they sound like, right? They're angiotensin II receptor blockers, they block angiotensin II. And if you remember, angiotensin causes vasoconstriction, so the narrowing of your blood vessels. So they stop it from doing that. So this results in vasodilation. So your blood vessels dilating, getting wider. They also excrete sodium and water and retain potassium. What are these types of meds commonly used for? Treating hypertension, heart failure, and prevention of stroke. And the two most common uh, types are Losartan and Valsartan. So these are the most common ones you'll see, but of course there are others. A mnemonic device to help you remember the common side effects is Losartan, which is the name of the medication, right? So L is for lowering the blood pressure. That's what we want it to do. That's the point of taking these meds. O is for other things like fatigue or dizziness. S is for swelling. A is for allergic reaction, so we need to check for that in any med that we would give. R is for raised potassium, because remember it causes you to hold on to your potassium. T is teratogenic, so this would not be given to a pregnant woman because it could cause uh, birth defects or even death of a fetus. A is for acute kidney injury, and N is for nasal congestion. Some nursing care when it comes to having patients who are on this medication. It's important first to remember that they're on ARBs because they are not able to tolerate ACE inhibitors. Because if you remember, the actions of both meds are very, very similar, right? So why would somebody be on ACE inhibitors versus ARBs? So they're on ARBs because they can't tolerate something about ACE inhibitors. So a lot of our nursing care is gonna be similar. Of course, assessing the blood pressure and the pulse prior to administering this med. Assessing for hyperkalemia, especially in our patients who have kidney failure. Assessing for angioedema. Avoiding high potassium foods and salt substitutes with potassium. So dietary education. You don't want them to have high potassium foods because they are at risk for hyperkalemia. And let's say they're a CHF patient, right, because this is another indication for this medication. They're a CHF patient who's been using salt substitutes, because that's very common uh, for CHF patients to do. We need to make sure that those salt substitutes they're using do not contain potassium. We need to monitor their BUN, their creatinine, and their urinary output, assessing for kidney damage. That's what we're looking for here. And then this is a medication where if we abruptly stop taking it, it could be very dangerous. So we want to educate the patients to not abruptly stop taking the medication. If they wish to stop taking it, um, they need to talk to their doctor and they need to do it under a doctor's supervision to slowly wean themselves off for safety. So important patient education about that. So that was my video on angiotensin II receptor blockers. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know, and if not, I'll see you on the next one.